to start, fellas. Let's dive right into it because we got a couple games on deck here. So it's the Cowboys versus Washington. Now Dallas is in a three-way tie for second with the Giants and today's opponent, Stephen A. Smith. Is it time to finally admit that Dallas is actually the best team in the NFC East? Well, I just want to make sure that I let the national audience know that clearly the, the, the team here on First Take have absolutely no love for me whatsoever uh, because it's Thanksgiving. And obviously, that's the first question that I'm being asked. And obviously, I have to admit that the answer is yes. So much to my chagrin, I have to look at the Dallas Cowboy faithful out there and say, as pathetic, as moribund, as horrible as you are this season, with all the bad luck that'll put a black cat to shame, the bottom line is you're still the best team in the NFC East. And it's really, really by default. The New York Giants are a team that has a bright future, but they have no Saquon Barkley and a quarterback that can't hold on to the football in Daniel Jones. So you wash them away. You look at the Washington football team, they don't even have a name for crying out loud. Okay, we know that they're pretty much null and void. Their quarterbacks are out for the season. We wish Alex Smith nothing but the best. It's a miracle just to see him in that starting lineup. In the case of the Philadelphia Eagles, we've lamented how horrendous their situation has been. Carson Wentz, about 18 turnovers, has been set Sacked. Lord knows how many times get knocked upside of the head over 40 times. This dude is all over the place right now. It's been a horrible season for him. And we understand how bad things have been for the Philadelphia Eagles. So by virtual default, even without the presence of a Dak Prescott, even with Ezekiel Elliott having only one 100 yard rushing game on this entire season, which just occurred last week, the Dallas Cowboys by default are the best team in the NFC East, unfortunately. No, first of all, no one's trying to hear that from you. you. You have the nerve to come out here on Thanksgiving of all days, where the Cowboys are on the slate every single year. Stephen A. Smith talking about the most nauseating fans ever, the Dallas Cowboy fans. No, no matter what, they will let you down. Are you actually sitting here today saying that the Cowboys, you, are saying the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC least? You are saying the Cowboys? Am I getting this right? Yes. Yes, because the conference is the NFC least. It ain't even the NFC East. So it's actually apropos that they're the best team in the worst conference in the history of football. The NFC least has the Cowboys as the best team. I see that as very reasonable. Look, they all, they all, none of them are any good. But if I had to choose the best team right now, I'd say the New York football giants. They're trending in the right direction. Their defense is looking good. Their offensive line at least is not as horrible as it was a couple of years ago. They're the only team in the division with a young ascending quarterback who's on the field right now. He's ascending slowly, but he is ascending. If I had to say who's playing the, the best quarterback right now in the NFC East, you're making me say it in the NFC least. I'll say Daniel Jones. And in fact, if you look at the way, yes, the Cowboys have that nice win against the Vikings. They're trending in the right direction, but so are the Giants. The Giants lost to the Cowboys by a field goal a bunch of weeks ago already. They lost a narrow game to the Eagles. They come right back. They beat Washington twice. They lost to the Bucks, Stephen A., by less than a field goal. It was a two-point loss to the Tampa Bay Bucks, who a lot of people still like to get out of the NFC. And then they just beat up on the Eagles. They beat them by two scores. They're the team trending in the right direction. They're the team with the defense. They're the team with the ascending quarterback. If you make me pick in this, in this division, I'll take the Giants over the Cowboys right now. Well, first of all, here's where I think your argument is wrong. First of all, you talk about trending. Trending doesn't mean you have arrived. Trending means that you're going in a proper direction, but you haven't, you're not there yet. That's number one. Number two, by the time they get there, Dak Prescott will probably be back, which means as a result, the Dallas Cowboys will have a quarterback that plays better than Daniel Jones. Number three, Saquon Barkley, again, is not there. What we have to applaud about the Giants is the fact that Joe Judge appears to be the right coach. David Gettleman and the Giants brass clearly have picked the right coach where we don't know that about Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys. He doesn't seem to be the right coach for them, but they still have Ezekiel Elliott. They still have a CD lamb. They still have an Amari Cooper. They still have a decent offensive line. Their defense is horrid. They're dead last in the league mm -hmm. in points allowed. They're dead last in terms of touchdowns against the pass or, or with their passing defense. They're definitely dead last. We get all of that, but their offense is so potent that the, the New York Giants can only hope such a thing for them. And that's where I'm at with it. I think that it's 
it's plausible that the Dallas Cowboys are the better team right now, regardless of how the Giants are trending. Until they get there, we can't sit up there and say they're better than the Cowboys. I mean, they just ran through the NFC East pretty good, ex- with the exception of the Cowboys, who they haven't played very recently. They just with beat the Washington twice yeah. and the Eagles. I mean, and, and by the way, as I said, came close. They really probably should have beaten the Bucs. That, that, to me, that's more impressive, mm-hmm. I think, than actually beating the Vikings. Mm-hmm. But you talk about the mm-hmm. Dallas offensive line being decent. No, it's not. Not anymore. Not really. The identity of Dallas and the yep. reason we think of them the way we've thought of them in recent years has been the offensive line. Mm-hmm. They didn't just put a second-round pick in for an offensive line. The they spent four out of five seasons drafting an offensive lineman in the first round. And that was the key to Ezekiel Elliott, as we're now seeing and everything else, it was their old line. That's not there anymore. It's gone. And that's not returning, not the way it was. So those Giants, the way you think of them, sorry, Cowboys, the way you think of them offensively is gone, right? But the Giants do have a new coach. You mentioned it yourself. And Joe Judge is doing a good job so far. And he has coached them up. And the defense is coming to get you. No, look, we're talking about three and seven teams right now. We're not, you know, we're splitting hairs mm-hmm. among bottom feeders. But among those bottom feeders, the Giants, have, uh, right now, you make me pick, they're better than the Cowboys. And furthermore, at least the Giants are my team. You're talking about the Cowboys? We're splitting hairs? And you're, you, there's not a dime's worth of difference? And your nickel goes to the Cowboys? Well, I think it's important that you remember how I started off the show. I lamented the fact that I had to even broach the subject. I didn't want to talk about the Cowboys, particularly on Thanksgiving. You're talking to an individual that doesn't believe the Dallas Cowboys have earned the right to play on Thanksgiving. I don't think they deserve it. I don't think the Detroit Lions deserve it. But that's a subject that we'll get into a little bit later on in the show. But I think it's important to remember that you sit up there and you want to give yourself a pat on the back and a round of applause because guess what? The Giants beat the Eagles and the Redskins. The Redskins are playing their third string quarterback. Now, we know that Al Alex Smith is not a third stringer when he's healthy, yeah. but that nasty leg injury, that nasty leg injury that he suffered a couple of years or more than a year and a half ago, we didn't know if he'd ever be play football again. So we applauded the fact that he was just on a football field playing. Dwayne Haskins is out. Kyle Allen is out. You look at Antonio Gibson. He's had one 100-yard rushing game this season. Rushed for 128 yards. Actually, a very stellar performance. Who was that one game against? The Dallas Cowboys. And they still, and that was the game the Washington football team won 25 five to three because the Dallas Cowboys elected not to show up in the end the Dallas mm-hmm. Cowboys on the offensive side of the ball has talent and they have more talent than anybody in the NFC least as you so eloquently stated regardless of their problems on the defensive side of the ball and I think because of that as of right now with the specter of Dak Prescott coming back eventually we all hope and pray I think the Dallas Cowboys unfortunately are still the best team in the NFC least because if one team was going to challenge them it was supposed to be Carson Wentz and the Eagles, and we know how horrible they've been. Nobody's documented that more than you, Max. Mm. All right. Let's go there right now, speaking of the Eagles. So they are in first place, fellas. I know this is a bit (laughs) misleading because we're talking about the NFC least. They haven't lived up to expectations, just three wins on the season. Carson Wentz has been an absolute shell of himself, and yesterday, Coach Doug Peterson was asked about his QB. Listen up. One of the things that I've learned as a player and, and I've seen as a coach um, is that the tough decisions have to be made in this in this business, whether it's a, a tough decision to, to move on from a player in the off season or the decision now to whether you're going to make the move at quarterback or not. You're not making that move, right, Doug, to a different quarterback? Not today on Wednesday, no. Okay, possibly for, for Monday? Um, I'm focused right now on getting better today. I mean, okay. we're looking. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I I would say no, no, no. Carson's your starter for Monday. Yes. Max, Thanksgiving's a feel-good holiday. Happens to be my favorite, but I'm forced to ask the difficult questions here on this show called First Take. Should Philly bench Carson? They should have benched him. You know, a month ago or three weeks ago when I first brought it up, it doesn't matter anymore just to hold them accountable. I don't think it matters anymore. But 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 the bigger thing for me is that was shocking sound from the presser, I think. I don't think Doug Peterson has the power to bench him unilaterally. I don't think he can make that decision. And he was asked the other day, does he have the autonomy to do it? And he avoided the question, right? He was evasive. He didn't answer it directly. So it felt to me at this presser like he came out 
and either someone like he got a message that he's supposed to send that yes he can make the decision and either he feels like mm, i really can't or he's been told explicitly he can't that's how it sounds to me i mean he came out there first and said he starts talking about organizational changes moving on from a quarterback and then he moves on to as of now wednesday this was yesterday as of wednesday he's the starter wednesday well hold up is he going to be the starter on monday and he equivocates, and finally he squeaks out a yes. Listen to this again. Listen to the end part again. You're not making that move, right, Doug, to a different quarterback? Not today on Wednesday, no. Okay, possibly for, for Monday? Um, I'm focused right now on getting better today. I mean, okay. we're looking, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would say no, no, no. Carson's your starter for Monday? Yes. Say it with your chest, coach. Say it with your chest. Carson, you start on Monday? Yes. Mike Tomlin, we ask him that question. Yes, this guy's dark. Peterson, yeah. That is a guy, Stephen A., who sounds to me like he does not have the autonomy to bench the quarterback. And that sounds like a coach who's thinking about his job, who's scared for his job, who doesn't know if he has the power to do what he needs to do as a coach. I think you're reaching. And, and the reason why I think you're reaching, Max, is because of a couple of things. Um, I'm going to defer to a quote that Doug Peterson made. I don't need to call it up or whatever because I think the audience would rather hear me speak than him. But I will tell you this. He did say, quote, you know, in terms of um, Carson, what he said, I, we are conceding to losing. I'm paraphrasing here. He said, basically, you're throwing away the season. Max, that is an indictment against Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has thrown two professional passes in the National Football League. Jalen Hurts was at the University of Alabama playing in a national championship game and had one of the most horrendous first half performances that we had seen. He got benched for Tua Tagovailoa, Tagovailoa, and went, and that obviously put Tua on the map because he ultimately brought Alabama back and they won a national championship against Georgia. We understand that. He had to transfer to Oklahoma, and even though he had a, a stellar season, primarily it's due to his running ability because when you watch him throw the football, it's been a challenge. You can't replace Carson Wentz with a dude that struggled to throw the football in college and has only two professional quarter, uh, quarterback throws in the National Football League. Eventually, I think that Jalen Hurts is a stud athlete, so eventually I think he'll improve his throwing ability, and as a result, he'll get his opportunity. But it certainly can't be now, and that's really what this is about, which brings me back to Peterson. You got Miles Sanders. You got Boston Scott. These dudes run the football exceptionally well. They have been running the football effectively. Why not run the football more and throw less? You've got an offensive line that clearly can run block. Both of them are averaging at least 4.8 yards a carry. Why not do that? You